I used to wear hijab. I don't anymore due to past trauma. I've been contemplating wearing it again, but I have dealt with the past sexual assaults and other trauma. It's difficult to reconcile the trauma with my deen and hijab. Things within the deen can be triggering while I try, while I try to work past it. Uh, your advice. SubhanAllah. This is something I always say to myself, and we all have to do this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us always keys for khair and not keys for the opposite. Obviously, I mean, I think, Allahu A'lam, is that this person, the trauma came from a religious person or quote-unquote practicing person, Allah knows. And this is where the trauma is. This is a very difficult situation. There is no answer will be given in a one minute for this. We need to talk. This person needs definitely counseling, professional counseling, um, to get over the trauma. And of course, Rania is way more professional than me and knowledgeable in this case, but you need to have counseling to get over the trauma itself first. Yes, the trauma is related to, to religion, but also that you have the trauma in there. So this needs to be taken care of. And then the second thing is the hijab related to that, and we need to dig into it. Why is that? But if I want to just give a general answer, and it's probably not going to be enough for that person, but for everybody, this is what I will say always. When you have a hard time forgiving someone, which we all have, I always remind myself of this. How many times I have disobeyed Allah? How many major sins I have committed? Major, I'm not talking about minor, myself. And everybody say the same question. But he still feed me. And he still give me a roof. And he's still waiting for me to say astaghfirullah. And he still wants me to go to Jannah. Why I can't do it? If you think this way, it will, the, the, the road for forgiveness will be much easier. And there is a dua in the Quran, actually, which happened as a, Sayyidina Umar used it later on in his khilafah. رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلَّ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Ya Allah, don't put in our hearts any ill feeling, grudges, hate to any of the believers. Anytime you look at someone and that someone, she or he, have hurted you, Allah knows what they did. Say that dua. It works wonder. Because who is going to clear your heart? It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that person definitely needs way more than what I just said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make a lot of dua to everybody. And you make dua for yourself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal you. Healing is, is, is not easy. SubhanAllah, unless you're really connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're really at that level where you don't see anything but you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make it easy for the heart. So I just, it's in Surah Al-Hashr, it's, it's a half of an ayah. It's وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ It's رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ Ya Allah, don't put in our hearts ill feeling. غِل is, is hatred with anger, both. لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا toward the believers. So that tells you a believer can hurt you and can lead to a hatred in your heart. And then you say, Rabbana inna karaufun rahim. You are all merciful. And so I want him to forgive me, then I need to do it with other people. It's in, I, I will check the number, I'll give it to you. I'm sorry? I attend, alhamdulillah. Rabbana. It's, it's, the dua is in the middle of the verse, it's not in the beginning of the verse. Jazakillah. So we're I'm actually try, dealing with a case where it's it's not from a Muslim person at all. So there's a different there's there's two points in the Quran where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about hijab. One of it in Surah Al Nur where it's talking about modesty, and in Surah Al Ahzab it actually talks about identity. And I think it's important to distinguish the two because if they're like I'm just gonna actually Dalia Mujahid did research about this. The, the spikes in Islamophobia are actually during presidential elections. It's not actually related to to terrorist attacks or anything like this, because it is more about the rhetoric. And my, my sister at the time, when the election was going on back in 2015, 2016, she lived in Kansas. She has four kids. The answer to her, I think, is different from an answer to me. I don't have any kids. This is my job. I live on a college campus. Like, you, you do have to use some judgment if the idea is fear. And if that is the case, because you do have a, you do have responsibility to protect your own life. Like, this is, <laughs> this is part of our sharia. 
But even within that, because I, I feel like there's a fear because hijab affects our identity, make sure that if, like, like, you can tie it backwards, you can wear a cap, you can do so many different things, because ultimately, at the end of the day, I need to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, I did my best. And because this affects our identity, may Allah protect us, a lot of the times I see someone that would, would take off their hijab and feel like that was what was holding them, and then it feels like everything kind of just let go. So how do I then maintain things and collect them? Because modesty, in and of itself, is, one of, is, a, is a part of our faith. And it sometimes is embodied in hijab, but it's embodied in so many different other ways as well. And I think that's important to, to, just, to know that. Um, I had another thought, and now it's gone. It's past my bedtime, guys, I'm sorry. No, this was the other thing. It really, really frustrates me in the Muslim community when women are told, you wear hijab so you don't attract the men. This is our act of worship. How'd they make it about them? Like, I just, I don't understand. <laughs> hijab is our act of worship to remember we're more important spiritually than we are physically. Your intention in it is important because people in society tell us this is based on your value and we're like, no, no, I'm more valuable because Allah said I'm valuable. And this is our act of worship, so your intention in it is important. The, there's, a, there's a lot of victim blaming that really makes me mad. That any time there is these, like, un these unfortunate incidents, like, what was she wearing? Who freaking cares? She's not the one that perpetrated a crime. And it just really, really, really makes me mad when people try to associate those two things we really have to work hard to disassociate those two things because they're idiots online that are seeing these things. And is we have to make sure that we are actually correcting those narratives and that we do actually have healthy relationships with our bodies and healthy relationships with our hijab and we feel spiritually uplifted wearing our hijab. And when someone is struggling with their Muslim identity, that we have grace with them of like, tell me what's going on with you spiritually. I remember I had a student that came to me and she said, I haven't prayed in three months. Do I take off my hijab? I feel like a hypocrite. And I was like, really, I think you should start praying. I don't think you should take off your hijab. They're two separate acts of worship. You don't know what brings you back to Allah. And can you imagine someone be like, well, if you didn't pray the you might as well not pray us. That doesn't make sense. You do as much as you can on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith the Prophet says, Saddidu wa qaribu. Just really fill as many of the gaps as you can, get as close as you can. None of us are making it to Jannah because they did it all. Nobody. We make it to Jannah because Allah is merciful. Including the Prophet ﷺ. Like really, can anyone worship like him? He said, Except that Allah envelops me in his mercy. SubhanAllah. You nobody is deserving. Allah is generous. SubhanAllah. Sorry, I know I went on a rant, but I just... May Allah protect us all. Yes. Um, we're gonna just do a. Tell us how you can con how you can be contacted.